Canada is about to catch a very serious contagious cold. After seeing what went down in round one of the French elections, I have to say I was quite excited to see Marine Le Pen's party on the cusp of making history. Everything was looking set to fall into its natural place when, out of nowhere, the various parties that make up France's left united into one massive collective blob of entitlement. By doing so, that leftist blob managed to shove Le Pen's party into the third place rank. Now that is some serious Ric Flair action right there. So there's both a good news, bad news way to look at this. Bad news first, of course. France is locked into its trajectory of doom for another four years. Who knows? They might not even make it that far. The good news is that even with all those parties uniting to form a massive punch bowl of socialism, they still couldn't come close to forming a majority. In fact, Le Pen got a larger percentage of the vote than all the other parties. All right, now let's bring this back over to Canada. The left here in the Great White North has just as much animosity for the right. And I have been to question period a grand total of once in my life. <laughs> and I was watching you and your colleagues and watching these monkeys on the other side. Can we influence them at all from opposition? Thankfully, we're nowhere close to having the problems France has, for the time being anyway. One of the only reasons for that is we only have one land bridge, and thankfully, it's guarded by the United States. But what we lack in a land bridge, we make up for in spades with inept governments who can't understand the most basic laws of immigration policy. But the BC government does say that their immigration rate has increased by about 84% over the past two years. Premier Eby saying they're welcoming about 10,000 new people to BC every 37 days. Is, is that not an unsustainable rate for a province like BC when they're saying they're recounting increased issues with homelessness, other sure. social issues? like? Is there more room for the feds to like, you know, talk with BC or does BC need to initiate that conversation well, they, Again, let's, let's not confuse apples and oranges. The, the, the larger proportionate amount of people that go to BC are on economic prog programs that bring capital to uh, British Columbia and to Canada. They pay taxes. Uh, they are some of the reasons why the economy of BC is doing so well. Uh, clearly, when there are asylum seekers that come with no money uh, and need resources, both provinces and Canada need to step up. There's also stuff that is entirely within BC's jurisdiction when it comes to international students. They, uh, alongside Ontario, has, uh, have aggressively recruited international students abroad uh, with some real distortions in the system that they themselves have acknowledged and are reigning in. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Canada needs to put its big boy pants on and that needed to start happening yesterday. We've cultivated such a soft society that no one has the chutz to stand up for anything anymore. And is it really any wonder why? I mean, for the love of Christ, even saying good morning is now being considered racist. The reason why I don't use the term good morning, did you know back in the slavery days after the masters had beaten us, taken our children, raped us, hung us, burned us, and then left us in a dark shed overnight, they would literally open up the door and they would greet us by saying, did you have a good morning? Meaning, did you cry all night over the things that we've done to your loved ones? So this is the reason why I took good morning out of my vocabulary because truly if you think about it there is absolutely nothing good about mourning ashe ashe can you believe that just today alone i've already maxed out my racism points by wishing three people a good morning on my walk with such a social climate in place it's easy to see why everyone's afraid of being labeled as a racist or a xenophobe no one wants to be the bad guy but hey if you're homophobic sure seems to be socially acceptable these days
And if all that gay pride parade blocking gets you hungry, you can now fill up on halal chicken at KFC with no more pork products on the premises. That's right, baby. If you've got a beef with the gay community, just slap on a free Palestine t-shirt and strap a bandana over your face and you get an instant free pass. So speaking of KFC, you ain't gonna get any more of this. Never mind that Muslims make up less than 4.5% of Canada's population. All 40 million other Canadians will simply have to find a way to adapt. Which brings us to the big question. Is a conservative government enough to keep things in check? Personally, I sometimes wonder if a Polyev government will actually be satisfactorily more hardline than, than Trudeau's government. So how about you? How do you feel? Do you think Polyev will do his best to keep immigration levels in check and impose stricter integration measures? Sound off in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already.